Back with more X4, I'm Brick Road, and in this video we'll be taking on Magma Dragoon, who, if I'm not mistaken, is the first fire-themed boss in the series. I've always been a fan of Dragoon's level because it's such an original concept. Setting the action inside of an active volcano really does a lot to make this stage pop. This stage is actually really fun, and is chock full of obstacles designed to leap out at you if you aren't playing carefully. Note that carefully doesn't mean slowly, you don't want to linger in any one section of the stage, or you might find yourself neck deep in flaming boulders. Like these ones, deviously placed to knock you into the pit. Even something as innocuous as walking along the ground can get you into trouble when these arcing fire spurts make their appearance. Knowing where to dash, where to leap, and where you can stop for a split second breather are all important if you want to make it through the volcano in one piece. Man, volcano level, why did it take him four games to get to this idea? I mean, it seems so obvious in retrospect, doesn't it? Fire boss, volcano, it's like chocolate and peanut butter. Well, whatever. I do my best to avoid damage in this section, but really it's a lost cause. Sometimes the meteor shower just doesn't want to cooperate with you. This is the end of the first half though, so you can just kinda gun it, soak up the damage, and get your health refilled after the checkpoint. I think these meteors here can actually destroy your platform, but I've never really had the inclination to wait around long enough to find out. Here's the staircase leading to the heart tank. Like the one in the bio lab, you can collect this with a pixel perfect dashing wall jump, but it's pretty dangerous to try, what with the meteors raining down and the respawning ride armor guy. It's better to just come packing Kuendu. Doing Dragoon's level now because the technique that I learn here is required to collect goodies in Spider and Walrus's stages. That leaves Peacock and Owl, which are two of my worst fights. Dragoon's weapon hits Peacock's weak point though, and Peacock's hits Owl's, leaving you with a nice, simple weakness chain to exploit. Dragoon himself is probably the hardest maverick in the game, but I have a pretty large advantage. I can fight him wearing this ride armor. The right armor acts as a damage shield. It's not invincible, but it can't take a beating before exploding. So I can fight Dragoon as reckless as I please. And boy, do I intend to. No, wait, X1 had Flame Mammoth, so Dragoon isn't the first fire boss. Mammoth's level was like a factory or something though, not a kick-ass volcano. And it was made of ice for some reason. Where was I? Oh yeah, Magma Dragoon. Fighting Dragoon is very reminiscent of a Street Fighter battle. Practically all his moves are takeoffs of Ryu or Ken, right down to the Hadoukens and Shuryukens. Expert players can play the same watch and react game with Dragoon that I played with Slash Beast, but I'm by no means an expert player. My strategy in this first match is just throw my ride armor against him and hope for the best. I do know three things about Dragoon. One, he never moves along the ground, he only moves by jumping, so stand still and prepare to dash under him. Two, he almost always follows his flaming kick attack with two Hadokens, so follow that dash up with a jump. And three, he has no weak point, but he takes extra damage from the lightning spear, which I don't have yet. New technique that I get here after this talky talky is a fiery uppercut attack that hits the weak points on three of the game's bosses, including one of Sigma's forms. Not bad for a day's work. Dragoon was my fourth Maverick, so there's supposed to be even more anime talky talky here, but I went ahead and edited it out so as to maintain some semblance of sanity. See you next episode. Wait a second, didn't X2 have a 